Hey everyone, how's it going? Today I'm diving into one of the more bizarre creations from the mind of Bloom and Voss, a company known for its oddball aircraft designs. I'm talking about the Bloom and Voss P-170 bomber, an aircraft that looks like it could be straight out of Star Wars, possibly piloted by a future Jedi or Sith. Sounds intriguing, right? Well, buckle up, because this thing is as strange as it is fascinating. The P-170 was a concept for a Schnell bomber, or fast bomber, a type of aircraft designed to prioritize speed over sheer firepower. Now, when we think of bombers, we usually imagine large, lumbering planes like the B-17 Flying Fortress or the Lancaster, huge machines built to carry massive bomb loads and armed to the teeth with defensive weaponry. These bombers could wipe out entire cities, but they needed fighter escorts to survive against enemy interceptors. But the Germans, specifically Blohm and Voss, had a different idea. Why not make a bomber that could outrun enemy fighters? That was the theory behind the Schnell bomber, a bomber built for speed over defense. The idea was to make it so fast that it wouldn't need escorts and could escape any enemy aircraft trying to intercept it. This was the concept Blohm and Voss would bring to life with the P-170. So what made the P-170 such a unique aircraft? One of the most striking features of the P-170 was its three-engine layout. Not just any three engines, though. Each engine was mounted in a different spot. You had the central engine and two engines at the wingtips. Each engine was powered by a BMW 8001 engine, churning out a whopping 1,860 horsepower, which would have made this bomber capable of reaching speeds up to 510 miles per hour. Impressive for a bomber, especially in the early 1940s. Now, why the engines at the wing tips? That was to minimize the effects of the torque. Each propeller creates its own rotational force, which can destabilize the aircraft. By having the engines rotate in opposite directions, Blohm and Voss hoped to balance out these forces and reduce drag. However, this design wasn't without its complications. Placing engines at the wing tips added extra weight and reinforced the wings significantly. Plus, if one of the engines failed, the asymmetric thrust could cause major handling issues. There's more. The P-170 also had two separate cockpits. The pilot sat all the way at the back of the aircraft, near the tail, while the co-pilot or bombardier sat up front, almost like they were in a separate pod. This design was likely to help with weight distribution, but it also gave the whole aircraft a very Star Wars-esque look. Imagine a young Jedi piloting this thing through space. It certainly has that vibe. The P-170 had an extremely unusual tail design, if you look at the plane from the top, everything seems normal, but viewed from the side, the oddity becomes clear. There was no vertical fin or rudder. Instead, Blohm and Voss decided to place small rudders at the wingtips, which is a feature you don't see often on aircraft. This could have been to improve stability, but some experts think it was an unstable design and the rudder placement was one of the reasons this plane never made it off the drawing board. Now, what about the bomb load? Well, this aircraft wasn't about carrying massive payloads like the B-17. Instead, the P-170 was designed to carry between 1,000 to 2,000 kilograms of bombs, or 12 rockets, mounted under the wings. Given its expected speed, it might have functioned more like a dive bomber, dropping its payload from high altitudes at incredible speeds. But here's the catch. 
the P-170 never went beyond the prototype stage, mainly because by the time it was ready for production, the Luftwaffe was already starting to shift its focus toward jet-powered aircraft. In fact, the Mi-262 jet fighter was already being tested by mid-1942, and it was faster and more efficient than anything the P-170 could hope to achieve. As fast as the P-170 was projected to be, it would have struggled to compete against the likes of jet aircraft, and that's probably why it was never built. Despite never becoming an operational aircraft, the P-170 remains an iconic example of the experimental and strange aircraft designs that were a hallmark of the German Luftwaffe in World War II. It's one of those what-if designs that makes you wonder how different the war could have been if it had actually flown. Some additional fun facts. Bloemen Voss was known for its unconventional designs. While other German aircraft manufacturers stuck to more traditional bomber and fighter layouts, Bloemen Voss didn't shy away from taking risks. And it paid off in some cases, like the BV 238, a massive flying boat. The P 170's design was influenced by earlier German bombers that emphasized speed. It's part of a long list of aircraft designed by Richard Vogt, the chief designer at Blom and Voss, who was known for pushing the boundaries of aerodynamics. The idea of placing engines at the wing tips was a novel concept that would be explored by other aircraft manufacturers after World War II particularly for aircraft requiring enhanced stability or greater maneuverability. In conclusion, the Blomen Voss P-170 is a fascinating chapter in aviation history, a plane that never got the chance to show what it could do, but remains a testament to Germany's willingness to think outside the box during World War II. Thanks for sticking with me to the end and I hope you enjoyed this dive into one of aviation's weirdest ideas. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Take care.